the Honourable Member for Beaches, East York. Thank you, colleagues. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to stand today in uh, the House in support of an act to amend the Access to Information Act, Bill C-567. There's a critical issue at play here, Mr. Speaker, the transparency of government. Many have spoken down through the many years in simple and profound terms about the centrality of this characteristic transparency to good and, importantly, democratic government. The concept is simple enough. Absent the ability for citizens and elected representatives to see into the workings of government to access information concerning the decisions and decision-making processes of government, government is free from scrutiny. Access to information is a precondition to the kind of government we want, one that is accountable to opposition and accountable to the electorate. And importantly, we are talking about a continuous state of accountability and, by extension, a constant access to the information necessary to ensure that condition. We all agree in words, if not deeds, in principle, if not practice, Mr. Speaker, that accountability should not just rise and recede with the electoral cycle. No one professes at least satisfaction with a system that would allow government to disappear and operate behind a curtain between opportunities to throw it out. And so one can find, Mr. Speaker, a long and interesting history to this bill and the principles of transparency and accountability that motivate it. A good place to start is 2005. With the Access to Information Act nearly two decades old, then Information Commissioner John Reed put forward a package of legislative reform for consideration. My colleague, the member for Winnipeg Centre, put forward that package in the form of a private member's legislation in 2006, 2008, and again in 2011. While it never passed, it is not as though there wasn't support outside of this House for greater access to information. In February 2009, then Federal Information Commissioner Robert Marleau released his 12 recommendations for strengthening the Access to Information Act. The House Access, Privacy and Ethics Committee issued a report in June of that year endorsing some of those recommendations. In 2010, there's a call from information and privacy commissioners across this country for more open government. There's cause for uh, calls for reform to the Act, Mr. Speaker. I remember not long after getting elected a constituent who was at one time a journalist and an editor for more than one national newspaper chain came to my office for a chat. At the time, I was critic for military procurement and the government's plan to purchase F-35s was a hot topic. And in that context, we were talking about access to information. As a general rule, he advised, if you want to know what's happening in Canada, cross the border into the United States and ask from there. Government is far more open there. I confess I was shocked by that, but my experience has proven this true, Mr. Speaker. More importantly, greater authorities have done ample analysis on this issue to support the contention that here, at home, we find ourselves in very sad shape on this important measure of democratic government. Take, for example, an international report comparing Canada to four other parliamentary democracies, Australia, New Zealand, Ireland, and the United Kingdom, put Canada in last place on access to information. That report graded us an F for fail, in fact. In 2011, a joint project by the Halifax-based Center for Law and Democracy and Madrid-based Access Info Europe ranked Canada in 51st place against measures of access to information. In 2013, Canada's Information and Privacy Commissions and Ombudspersons passed a resolution on modernizing access and privacy laws for the 21st century that in included recommendations to improve access to information. And so we have, just last November, Suzanne Legault, our Federal Information Commissioner, tabling her annual report to Parliament, Mr. Speaker, highlighting weaknesses in the information system that need to be urgently addressed. According to the Information Commissioner, and I quote, altogether, these circumstances tell me, in no uncertain terms, that the integrity of the Federal Access to Information Program is at serious risk. It is imperative that the problems in the system be fixed promptly and substantively. 
end quote. And so here we are today, Mr. Speaker, with a substantive and obviously prompt response to problems in the system. Now, this is not the full package of reforms to the Act that the member for Winnipeg Centre has previously tabled in this House. Instead, Bill 567 is, in his terms, and I quote, a modest effort and seeks to address only those aspects of reform on which there is a stated and documented consensus. The bill, therefore, contains six key clauses. The first would give the Information Commissioner of Canada the power to make orders to compel the release of information that is, in his or her view, should be released. The second expands the coverage of the Act to all Crown corporations, officers of Parliament and foundations and organizations that spend taxpayers' money or perform public functions. Third. The bill subjects the exclusions of Cabinet confidences to the review of the Information Commissioner of Canada. The fourth requires public officials to create and retain documents and records necessary to document their actions or decisions. Fifth, the bill provides for a general public interest override for all exemptions so that the public interest is put ahead of the secrecy of the government. The sixth and final part ensures that all exemptions from the disclosure of government information are justified only on the basis of harm or injury that would result from the disclosure and not from blanket exemption rules. Let me, Mr. Speaker, applaud my colleague from Winnipeg Centre for being such a consistent, indeed stubborn, advocate for greater openness and transparency, not just over time, but importantly from within this House. Over time, there have been just a handful who have led this cause from a seat in this place. Mr. Speaker, there are others who have called for reform of the Act, for greater openness and transparency, but rarely from inside this place. The former selves of this Conservative government are one such example. In fact, the substance of this bill, the six simple points set out above, as the member from Winnipeg Centre happily acknowledges, are lifted straight from the 2006 electoral platform of this Conservative government. Throwing back the curtains and shining a light into the dark recesses of government was once a good idea, they thought. In fact, they raised the principles of openness and transparency and accountability into an ideology unto itself. Fair enough. But now, having listened to this debate and having read the speeches from across the aisle, we find, again, that they left the white horse they rode in on tied up outside. We have a government justifying keeping those curtains shut tight and the light out, justifying governing hidden from the gaze and scrutiny of those whose lives and country they govern. How can we be open and honest all at the same time, they ask in opposition to this bill and in opposition to their former selves. It is a government obsessed with ensuring its own privacy, but equally obsessed with knowing the business of Canadians. Their objection to governing in the light of day comes coincident with news, further evidence, I should say, that they have virtually no regard for the privacy of Canadians, it just being revealed that this government has made 1.2 million requests for private information from telecommunications companies. So egregious is this level of warrantless snooping into the phone and internet records of Canadians that we, the NDP, are dedicating the rest of the day in this House to a motion calling on the government to take better care to safeguard the privacy of Canadians and put an end to the indiscriminate requests and disclosures of personal information of Canadians. Mr. Speaker, there's an opportunity here today for reconciliation for the government to reconcile its current self with its former self, for the government to reconcile what it proposed in opposition to what it does in government, to reconcile its brand with its product, its ideology with its practice, to reconcile its obsessive grip on its own privacy with its disregard for the privacy of Canadians. I urge it to support Bill C-567. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.